Hi, I'm Mrs. Kaspersky of Fontana. I belong to Kaiser Permanente. Uh, right now I have 12 chapters on this site, kaiserpaper.com. And Vicki was fantastic in letting me put this over the years on the site, fighting for my rights. And today I want to talk about chapter 12. And chapter 12, what has happened to me and what I'm trying to do about it. First of all, bear with me. <laughs> My first video I'm making. <laughs> okay. So, a little bit nervous. So, just hang in with me. Yes, Mrs. Casper, she with the pink glasses. Oh, well, not for a little fun games here. Okay, let's get down to brass tacks. First of all, I want to explain what happened to me. Last year, May 29, 2010, I ended up in the ER. Kaiser Permanente ER. Then, which they did not really help the, what the problem was, which they were telling me when I got there and they took the test. I was fine. There was nothing wrong with me. Just a little breathing problems and they helped me with that. And then a second time, the same thing. And sending me home. And the third time. Now out of those two visits, uh, four visits all together, I did have a tech that they sent for St. Jude to come out and check my pacemaker and my pacemaker was working fantastic. Um, I am overweight as you can see. I'm up in the years, 67, and I have a pacemaker. So having this pacemaker I was promised by Kaiser Permanente verbally if I got this, in which I needed that, they would take care of my pacemaker and me which they violated. Okay, so anyway, um, the first and second and third time in the ER, remember that was May 29, 2010, May 30th, 2010, June 2nd, 2010, and June 27, 2010. I did run into a doctor that was new, he says to Kaiser, he did or somewhat in cardiology and he read my reports coming and going from there and checked me out he says I know what your problem is and I go what he says it's your pacemaker I said you're gotta be kidding you know the tech said it was working just fine he says it is there's nothing wrong with it it's working just fine I said then what is the problem the problem is that your pacemaker is set at 50, the rate, and it should be set at 70, the rate. This is why at home, repeatedly why you've been getting like out of bed, in the bathroom getting up or whatever, and passed out. The lack of oxygen and blood to your brain. Your body's not getting efficient enough. Your heart is beating too slow. I said, you got to be kidding. Well, he sent for the tech and waited once again a long time, hours, and he finally came. The doctor told him how to program it from, they want to set from 50 to 70, you know, boost up the rates. So he did. That next day, I went shopping with my husband. I had plenty of oxygen. I was rested up and I felt so good physically, mentally, that now I'm going to live a little bit longer. No suffering to the next time. Okay. Now, what I'm getting at, you're saying, well, that's a nice story. Well, let me tell you what happened during this time. 
been in the ER. Great Cowan home. I basically lived in the bathroom where the sink, the toilet was available. And when I had to finally try to sleep for a while or could try gasping for air, I laid my bed sitting straight up, which is uh, 70 feet away from my bathroom, which that was an effort getting to, alone trying to get situated in the bed, trying to find the oxygen. And that's where I stayed all this time for a month, basically a month, except trying, so exhausted to go to bed and trying it. Well, in the ER, as they said, oh, everything's fine, you know, your respiration, everything's just fine. Your temperature, your breathing, you might got a little problems. I was gasping for air. I've been passing out. And this is what they give me? You've got to be kidding. Well, see, last year, there was an RMP that retired from cardiology in Fontana. She was awesome, just an awesome, awesome person. She lived up to her oath. When they was in the hospital, ER was a problem. She thought it might be the, the pacemaker. She was right there. And if you had a problem, you call up and she gets you in right away. You know, no two buts about it. She squeezed you in. And from what I heard from other people, I was the only one. She did to all her patients. She was fantastic. This is what I heard also from the nurses. Beyond the call of duty. Well, when she retired, all hell broke loose. And Karen Allen with Kaiser trying to get into cardiology to see what the problem was. I already used my two visits up. I mean, excuse me, for that year, okay. I think I had it in March when the problem happened in May, okay, um, I had to wait. You know, I didn't have, I had to have that second visit. So it was March, April, May, June, July, August, September, which I got a lot later to try and get me in. Anyway, uh, you're only allowed two visits. So in between those visits, you go to ER, they refer you to. Okay, this is where you go. Because what well, I was told, okay, that since Jan, well, since she left, there's no more freebies. These are freebies I was, everybody was getting. Well, I remember paying for some of those freebies. Okay, so that is no longer. Okay, so if you go to the ER and you have a pacemaker problem, uh, I was, I got a letter stating that. The ER well took care of me. There are plenty of cardiologists, doctors there, and I, there was no reason for me something that took well care of me. And I'm going, huh? I says, but they didn't know nothing about pacemaker, just the basics. They got to carry. There was cardiologists that could take us. They didn't. Well, I decided to do some research and some asking questions and what have you. And this is what I found out. That all doctors in the United States, if they want to be doctors, they graduate with the cardi they're all cardiologists. Every one's a cardiologist automatically. Then you become an MD. So when you're an MD, <coughs> graduate and you're all through and everything, you, you might want to go into a different field. Brain surgeon, you know foot doctor specialized in hands or surgery whatever you know and some take an extra education that specializes in cardiology on pacemakers typically what have you how to operate the machine how to know the difference between if it's the heart acting up or the pacemaker causing the heart but whatever distinguish the difference so anyway we don't have that in the ER in Fontana. None at all. We don't have a machine. We don't have a doctor that can operate except I was like the one I just if he had a machine, I imagine he said he you know he knew about pacemaker, he worked in cardiology. 
and he knew what he was talking about, so I imagine he wanted to work the machine, but no machine. Okay, so if there's a problem, they sent for a tech. Might take nine, ten hours, or thirteen, or two, whatever. But, you know, you have to wait. And uh, they come to you, and they can tell you if your pacemaker is working. But they don't know if there's a problem. And if there is, the way I understand it, he's not an MD, or he's not specialized in this, to tell an MD what's wrong and how to set it. He's a tech. Hello. So anyway, so that's why in cardiology we have a doctor who specializes in this and knows what he's doing. Well, don't want to sleep. So anyway, the suffering I have, this can happen again. And I might not be lucky to get that doctor. That doctor might be gone. And I suffer again. Maybe my heart won't be able to take the stress. So I call membership services which they know me very well up there now. And I said, what cardiologists do you have, different places, like Burside, wherever, that I can go to that doesn't operate like Von Tennyson's? And they says, well, we can't tell you that. We don't know. We've gotten our field. So I did call the state, and the state says, they have to give you, I told you, three options. And if they can't to help you in this field, then you can go to any cardiologist anywhere and they have to fit the bill. So I call up Riverside and they tell me, they can't tell me. I'm a member of Kaiser, but they can't tell me because I have to send my records there, come a member of cardiology, have appointment date, then they can tell me the do's and don'ts at the upper end type content. Huh? Well, if I do that and they say, yes, we do operate at the content, then I have to do the whole thing to going to Anaheim Cardiology. I thought, this is asinine. Don't they have a printout? I imagine they give it to the health uh, insurance company staff how they operate. I mean, how many visits? How, what are we going to give for your page? So, you don't get nothing. So, if I'm healthy and I have problems with, between my two visits or whatever, or they're used up, I go to ER. Isn't that nice? Okay. And for you people that are overweight or have pa have pacemakers, you know what it's like. <sighs> Try to breathe and go, especially if you're overweight. But, you know, here's the heart at 50. Is going and my my body is required to go faster. Nobody in the ER knew this at all. All I know is they said my blood pressure is fine. They said you know I have breathing problems, but other than that, you know I look fine. They said the X-rays look fine. Basically, sent me home. Well, I decided. I'm going to try to get a cardiology in there. I call. We need one for pacemakers and defibrillators. We got babies that have these pacemakers in them. We got children, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers that depend on these doctors to know what they're doing. Just think if I had a little child and I didn't know enough to, about pacemakers, basically, or well, which I don't really. It's just what I'm starting to learn. And trusts the doctor and goes home. The doctor thinks, okay, the best of, you know, this is what it is. You know, goes home. And the child, whoever dies, shortly, gasps him for air. The lung, the heart could not take it any longer, the stress. We need, when there is somebody with a pacemaker difficult, we need to have on call at all times for the ER. We also, if there's room for the cardiology department, start doing the same thing when Jan Harvey was there. It was awesome. But when I did some more research, I'm finding out there's a lot of people, hundreds and hundreds
hundreds of people with Kaiser in California that have pacemakers and fibrillation, what have you. And then in Fontana, there's only two, one doctor you can see it for pace, uh, for defibrillators. Now there's one, it's not an MD, but he takes care of pacemakers. And I don't want him. Not that way he did me last time. Uh-uh, mm-mm, years ago. No way. So I request for my regular doctor. And he ignores me. He, uh, I calls uh, for help. Won't answer him. I remember them taking message right and left, like, you know, there's my chance for my my calls. I always go in, you know, I have problems. What's going on? I found out everybody's taking her messages, but she's been done gone for quite a while now. You're going to be kidding. So what they do? Take her messages and trash them. Who was taking care of her patients while she was gone? She did all this. She was fantastic. Now we don't have that service. And I did get a letter from Anaheim. They offer it at Montana. Riverside will not answer. These are certified letters. They will not answer me at all. Montana, I want to write down, will not comply. <laughs> so what you gonna do? So I finally decided enough's enough. So I called the health department. And in the health department, there's different departments that can take care of you. It's your problem. So I tell verbally on the phone what my problem is. And that person was supposed to take care of it. Way down the line, finally get a letter. Well, you know, we got, you know, you've got good taken care of in cardiology. Glenn's fine, probably had plenty of cardiologists on what your problem is, you know, basically. Goodbye, more or less. I went, huh. I called up, and this was the end of January, close to the end of January of 2011. And I had somebody else take over. I was very upset. And that person said that night, as soon as we get off of the phone, which just was getting dark out, we had a long talk, explaining, very sincere. I'm going right out there right away and I'm going to find out what's just going on as soon as we hang up. That was the last I heard. And I waited and I waited and weeks and whatever going by. I called. Well, he's still working on. You know, he has a lot of other places too where he's, he's working on, he's working on. That's all I ever got. So finally I wrote a letter and I said, you know, just call me. Send me a, a letter or something that, you know, still working on it. Uh, so far, it's sort of what I got, you know. Uh, I would like some more information from you or, or something. Give me some hope. Nothing. So I sent another fax. I finally get an answer. And he tell, this person tells me, well, I did check. He says, cardiology did take, uh, ER did take care, care of you. So what are you complaining about? You're alive, aren't you? That doctor did save your life, didn't you? Yeah. So what are you complaining about? Why don't you just drop the issue? Be happy that you're alive. And they saved your life, this doctor. You should be full of gratitude, professor. I went, huh? This is coming from an agency. I pay with my tax dollar to help me with something that's wrong. It's wrong with the system today. So I says, no. As far as I can say, you can call it malpractice. I says, no. I want you to go in and take care of it. Are you sure? I know it sounds like a malpractice practice even himself. I said, no, I don't want to drop it. What if the next time I'm not that lucky and he's not there? But look at you are here today. Look how happy you are to be alive. But they did say, that's not the issue. I'm thinking to myself, what kind of idiots do we have today running these, these offices, these departments? My gosh, I'm 67 years old. I got more brains than he does. I was really teed off. I got a temper. Anyway, uh, so then I finally wrote him a letter and I says, you know, I'm very shocked what you said. 
and you still need to get back with me. So then I called the governor's office. And the governor's office is, I said, who is over the health department? And they said, HHS. And I said, fax everything to us, everything. I did with the fax letter explaining, uh, breaking down the story and then all the paperwork to back up and everything. I think there was about 30 papers I, I faxed plus. Okay, a few extra. And I didn't hear nothing. Didn't hear nothing. Nothing about what's going on. At least time we got the paperwork and the letter. We'll be working on it about a month from now or something or anything. Nothing. So I called the other day. And he checked and said, you haven't heard nothing. I says, no. Did you? I'll give you a number to fax everything back to to make sure. What's the fax next? Well, that's when I faxed it. He says, you're kidding. And no, that's the governor's office. We put HA. That's on there. And I thought to myself, what do I gotta do? They're still well right now, they're still haven't responded. You know, by phone, by fax, uh, by letter, nothing. So in May, which this last May was a whole year. Probably take a couple more years. I'm tired of waiting. So I'm waiting for an answer from them. The only way anything I can go after this would be American Civil Liberty Union. They took my rights away. I pay taxes for these departments and I expect them to do the research. That's what they can pay for. Well, if the agencies have been cut in half and the manpower, they just can't really get to it. Why don't they call and say something? It's going to take four or five months longer than normal because we're understaffed or something. But nothing. If they don't answer, the next thing I do is ACLU. You know, that's the only thing to think of. There's a lot. There, there's a lot of stake here. I don't know how many people in ACLU or HAS has pacemakers. They're like, I don't remember a Kaiser. And if something happens to them, and they can't speak and say. Well, I'm a big shot. I'm from such and such or something. They're out. And their pacemaker just about had it. They can't really speak and gas more air. They're going to be treated just like anybody else. They're going to find out. It might be too late. So I think since they gave us these pacemakers, they should maintain them. But, oh, I did get on the phone, also in a letter. Well, guess what? You have, you can put this little device, goes through the phone, and you can have a pacemaker check to see if it's working right. Or if there's something wrong with your pacemaker. You put the phone on it, you know. And also put the little magnet on your chest and what have you. Okay, we can do that. Make sure it was working or not. Okay. But see that, saying the pacemaker is fine, a doctor who specialized would have known that is fine, but it was the programming or something, the way my body chemistry is or something. So I have no idea. All I know is I'm going forward with the help of this site. Um, I'll continue. I plan to this video. I'm going to go further than that. I'll put it on YouTube, what have you. And till I get a response, somebody, you know, there's no saying in the United States. United we stand. If we don't stand united, we fall. Our voice is heard in numbers. Now, that's why if any of you have any complaints and scared to come forward, don't be as scared. There's nothing they can do to you that scare you. You know, you have rights. This is still America. And freedom of speech. I am saying what I am. And everything I'm seeing, I have documented. I have proof. So there. So anyway, if you read the 11 chapters, which I'm thinking of making videos of the 11 chapters, each one, 
There's one that, the other one's, this is just the finishing of some problems. The other ones are really horror stories. I mean, they make a nice movie, believe me. And I always thought my story is so bad until I heard some of the stories on the site, the lawsuits against Kaiser. Shocking. Scare the hell out of you. Let me tell you. Anyway, I don't have any choice right now with Kaiser. I'm going to make them take care of me right. But, you know, I paid for that service. They promised me. Like they did others. Anyway, there was one time I go back had to do with pacemakers. Most of them were pacemaker problems. And I just had a pacemaker put in. And the story, if you go back and listen to about my pacemaker, um, there's a couple stories there about what happened in the, um, what do you call it, the um, operating room. Oh, that was shocking what happened to me. Uh, so when I had to get the state to help me to get into cardiology, I just, it's been so, so overwhelming. And so this is also for you to read, for you can see exactly what's going on, where you know where you're at when you're with Kaiser. If you don't have to be with Kaiser, then don't go to where you can pick your own hospital, your own doctors, you know, whatever. That's nice, but that does cost. So right now, I move Kaiser. So I think that is it for now. I hope I didn't bore you. Um, let's see here. Okay. On the side, I don't know if you can see this or not. Um, I typed it up really quickly to get my notes and what have you, but the first one, chapter one, is about getting a pacemaker. The second one is getting the pacemaker put in. The next one is what happened about mammogram and the pacemaker. Getting a mammogram, what happened? I had to have emergency surgery to have it taken. That's not a long story. The day of the surgeries and um, once they transferred to Versa Permite to cardiology, that was the story itself. Um, a lot of it pertains to the pacemaker. And that is really a shame. And um, so if you have a pacemaker out there, or you already think you're going to have one, you better check these chapters. It's Mrs. Kaspersky in Fontana. Uh, thank you for listening. And please join this shot site. It's fantastic. They're very supportive. And now, if you don't do something, I'm just thinking, I'm sorry, scared to say something. It's your life. If you got a pacemaker, it's your life. You better speak out. Because you just don't die. I've been, been brought back before, cold blue. And it, there's no easy way of dying. No easy way of coming back. Well, take care. Bye-bye.